Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the first design meeting for site 114 EW4, an elementary school opening in 2022 in the Horizon West Village F North area. A few notes about how this meeting will work. Attendees are automatically muted with cameras off. Please use the Q&A tool to ask questions. I'll be reading questions aloud after the presentation. Similar questions may be combined. Um, the chat is also open if you're having problems getting your questions in, that's kind of a backup, but I will be looking to the Q&A first. And uh, please direct any questions for the panel to the Q&A. Um, so the video icons you see above or to your side, depending on how you have your view set up, are panelists who are here to possibly be able to answer questions today. Um, I've told the panelists that they can put their, turn their videos off because we were having bandwidth problems earlier. But whenever a panelist speaks, they'll they'll turn their video camera on. Um, if you have any technical issues, you can reach WebEx support at 1-866-229-3239. That information is also in the chat. If you do call them, your options are two and then one. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the OCPS Facilities Communications YouTube page, as well as um, it will be sent out in the link to all attendees. The presentation has been posted at facilities.ocps.net, and it's also on board member Gould's page at ocps.net under school board, and then you would choose board member Pam Gould. Um, but before we get started, let's turn to board member Gould for welcoming remarks. Um, Francisco, if you could just show the agenda real quick. And then on to Pat. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, we're excited to be bringing a, another school to really add to our complement of schools on uh, the west side of town and in District 4. And without any further ado, let's jump right in and get the details. Okay, so I would like to introduce uh, some people who are on this call who can potentially answer questions. So that, that was board member Pam Gould. She is the school board member for this school. The area superintendent for this school will be Dr. Jennifer Cupid McCoy, uh, and she is on the call. Uh, Principal Delane Bender from Summer Lake has joined us. That's one of the schools that will be affected. And we also have Principal Laura Busey on. Uh, she is actually going to be the principal of the new high school that's across the street. So if there are any questions that relate to the high school, she's been kind enough to join us today. So this project is being designed uh, by BRPH. That's the name of the architecture firm. Uh, the project lead is Francisco Alvarado. You will hear from him shortly. And the project manager for BRPH is Mikhail Kuj. Uh, the traffic engineer for this project is Rick Baldaki with Avcon. And the civil engineer is Jay Klima with Klima Weeks. So the facilities team uh, has a number of representatives here today. Uh, from the design team, we have Michael Gallo. And uh, from planning, I saw Stephen Thorpe popped on. So this particular project has a uh, liaison between OCPS and the architect and the construction manager for this project. That's Tamara Cox, and she's on this call. And for the high school, it's Cass Hurst, and he is also on this call. Um, this school site will have a bus, uh, the high school site across the street will have a bus depot. I know there were some questions about that last time. So Adam Zubritsky is on here with transportation. Uh, Richard Kirkham is on with fire, health, and safety. And we do have uh, our partners with Orange County. Christina Pichardo Cruz from traffic is online listening. Um, she may not have. Um, audio access. And I just also wanted to mention that uh, Kim Hop Hawkins from School Board Services is on listening. So I think I've caught everybody. If I haven't, I will uh, come back to them a bit later. Uh, Francisco, if you could move the slide up one. Thank you. So the rezoning process is a community-based process where um, there is a number of opportunities for public input. So as you can see, um, there's some work that goes on with the rezoning process ahead of time, but the rezoning for this school will not actually begin until spring of 2021. So you may wonder why we're here today. Well, we're here today because the design 
pro process for a new school, as well as um, for the, the time needed to build the school, we need more advanced time to do so. So we've actually already begun the design process for this school. Um, so I do think there are a couple more people that I, I need to introduce. Okay, um, so Mo Arthur is here um, from the project management team. Desma Lambert, our construction planning director is on and Rory Salambeen, senior facilities executive director is also on. And I, I will um, switch some settings so that we can see them also. Um, I just wanna mention one more time, questions please for audience members, if you could use the Q&A. Questions will be read out loud and answered at the end of the presentation. Um, we won't reply during the meeting, but rest assured we'll get to your question at the end. Uh, so Francisco, if you could take it from here. Thank you, Lauren, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Francisco Alvarado with BRPH Architects Engineers. Um, as Lauren mentioned, we are the uh, architects uh, for this project on site uh, 114 East, uh, I'm sorry, uh, site 114, um, which is located a, uh, located right uh, east of the 429 and west of um, Disney. This site is going to be a new relief elementary school um, that's going to be situated in the Horizons West area. Like I mentioned, west of Dr. Phillips, it will help relieve the elementary schools in the area, particularly Summer Lake Elementary School and Water Spring Elementary School. Uh, the school has grades pre-K. Uh, Pre-kindergarten through grade five with special needs programs such as exceptional student education. A little bit closer view of the site. Um, here's site uh, 114. Again, it's going to be off of uh, Saito Road and Summer Lake Grove. Um, it's going to be adjacent to the new high school that Lauren mentioned, site uh, 113. And it's going to be adjacent to the Lakeshore neighborhood um, located here. Now, on this slide, what we've done is we've overlaid the site plans of the uh, elementary, so proposed elementary school and the proposed high school here. So everyone can see an overview of where we are. As I mentioned, there's Seidel Road here, uh, and there's going to be some uh, ground route road improvements based on Seidel to accommodate both of these projects. Now we've uh, rotated the image uh, clockwise um, so that you can get even a closer view on here to see how both of these uh, sites kind of uh, align to each other. Again, there's the plan, there's the residential neighborhood of Lakeshore. Uh, just adjacent to the planned elementary school. A closer view of the site plan, of the proposed site plan. Again, this new elementary school is going to consist of a two-story uh, building totaling 94,000 square feet. Uh, the school is going to have a capacity for 837 students. It's going to have a car capacity of 133 cars and a car queuing for 215 cars. And which you can see dep depicted here in this image, this way. It's also going to have bus queuing for 17 buses on this side of the building as well. Parents, staff, and visitors will enter off of Summer Lake Grove Street at the north end, which is on this side, and buses will be entering through the south through the south end. The parent drop off is next to the main entry that faces Summer Lake Grove Street at the north end of the and the buses at the south end. The school includes a play field, basketball courts, uh, tot and, and youth lots. Uh, it's important to note that the tot lot is gonna include a, fa a fabric shade structure with that, as well as a detached cover play area for PE activities. There's accommodation for 12 future portables, should there be a need for that in the future. It is anticipated that there will there should be students walking or riding their bikes their bicycles to school. They would arrive from the uh, adjacent neighborhood through the existing sidewalk, going through here. There's the side that connects through there and into 
drop their bike rack here and then enter the entry of the school. On the alternative route, it's off of Bismarck Palm Drive, connecting the sidewalk here and then walking through here and dropping off and entering into the classroom there. A little detail on the on the floor plan or the layout of the school. Um, we gonna have off of the lobby is where you have your main uh, areas uh, such as the administration area, uh, the media area, the dining and multi-purpose area as well. That's as well as your art and music. Um, there's also then off off to the side. There's going to be your classroom wing over here. That also includes a skills labs. Two resource areas as well as accommodating for teacher planning. On the second floor, it's a partial second floor over the classroom wing, which is an additional classroom wing with two resource areas and, and building support areas as well. This is the 14th iteration of the BRPH elementary school prototype, with the first prototype constructed in 2008. And the last being Castleview Elementary, uh, which was open in 2019. Throughout this, uh, throughout this time period, we've made several improvements to the prototype, which include LED energy efficient lighting, fabric shade structure covering the tot lot, two way emergency radio systems, Wi Fi connectivity, technology enhancements and improvements, and fans at the covered play area. This project is going to be designed to meet Green Globe sustainable building standards. The sustainable features include uh, native and low um, native and low water plants that will help reduce water consumption. Stormwater design is low impact and incorporates the best practices for on-site infiltration and stormwater management. For the building, we have 10% more energy efficiency that the benchmark for commercial building energy codes, otherwise known as ASHRAE. We have a higher efficiency chiller, producing about 8% energy reduction. Light color roofing to help reduce heat gain and improve energy performance. Energy star rated equipment, water savings toilets, faucets, and fixtures. The majority of all classrooms have natural daylighting. Thermally efficient windows and a fully automatic building control systems that allows for the air conditioning and the lights to turn on and off when the building is not in use. Examples of the classrooms in, include um, each classroom is going to have technology, which has including a touch panel TV. And here are some examples of the specialty classrooms, including your science lab, your music area, your skills lab, and your art room. The lobby and cafeteria, like I mentioned off of the lobby, is where you'll see access to the main areas. In this case, you're showing the administration area, the media center, and then this is a view of the multi-purpose um, and dining room area with the stage for performances off at the end. Here's a rendering of what the school uh, will potentially look like. It is, uh, again, it's, it's, it's flanked, it's the lobby area is flanked on the outside by nice open area with some nice landscaping in front of the building to create a welcoming environment to the students and the neighborhood. The schedule, as Laura mentioned, we are in the process of, we're at the beginning of the design phase with design scheduled to conclude in January, 2021. From then we want to go through a six month period of permitting and bidding uh, up to June, 2021. And then we're anticipating 11 months of construction with construction complete on May 2022, and then which provides the school board um, a few months there to do some moving and the school opening ready for August 2022. Enough for questions and answers. Okay, thank you so much, Francisco. So for all the attendees, if you could look on your screen, you'll see the way to ask a question. You should have a button uh, for the Q&A. And you can click that and type in a question for the panel. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you would have. Um, I'd also like to mention that Commander Jamie Alberti from the OCPS District Police is also on the call, and I missed him before. So sorry about that, Commander Alberti. 
Um, so I don't, I, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see any questions, but I know a few that I've gotten emailed that, that I'll just throw out there and provide answers to. One was about a gate access from the neighborhood, and the last I heard, we're still working with the developer. Um, then, um, let's uh, mm -hmm. let's show that to people. Francis, can you bring up slide? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's ten, and circle that um, sidewalk connection that Pam's referring to, please. Yeah. Um, and obviously, we wanted, we would like to see that happen so that we can um, make it as easy for the children and the safest possible way. But we are still working with the developer on that. And I don't think that we had an update. At least I didn't see one in my mailbox today, unless some of the staff knows something different. And then the other um, item that uh, has, has been brought to um, the forefront with the the high school opening up across the street is traffic. The staggered, there'll still be some staggered times, even if we start the high school slash middle school a little later. And I don't know that we would keep the high school at that later time. We would be doing that the first couple of years to kind of split the difference from the middle and the high school um, start time. So I know that that permanent start time for the high school has not been developed, but there obviously we will do the best we can to stagger so that that traffic um, is as easily managed as possible on Sidell Road. Uh, and I know the county's doing some road improvements and some lights and, and those kinds of things as well um, that over the next two years, um, by the time the school opens, but also uh, even after that, I think there's some road improvements going out towards um, 545 that we can verify uh, with the county. And uh, also, as part of the high school project, we're doing improvements along a couple spots along site L um, to improve the access to the high school site, which since it's right across the street from 114 will will affect them also. Which pro usually provides more turning lanes so that traffic can flow and things like that, just so that people are aware that it won't be exactly the same as it is right now. Hopefully there'll be enough improvements that with the exception of pinch time at every single school at that maximum release, um, which is fairly short, like 10 to 15 minutes, it, it should flow fairly well. And if it doesn't, yes. we'll, we'll keep coming out until it does, just like we have at Sunset Park and many other locations. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And just to add to what you were saying, Pam, I just wanted to point out people who are who are looking at these drawings, like the the long snakes, uh, the long snaking lines you can see on both the high school and the elementary school side um, are intended to stack as many cars as possible off of the main roads. Right. And the next meeting for this site will be in the spring when the design is complete. And uh, at that point, we should actually be able to have a little more detail on the roads, showing the changes that are going to be uh, put in for the high school. And so we'll have uh, a more visual detail on that. Like right now, everything's just at the drawing phase, but by the spring, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to make this site a little more, this uh, slide rather more detailed. Right. Those were the two top things that I've been emailed or texted about on this site. So um, I don't recall any other questions. I think those were the big ones. Let me just ex explain the, the Q&A one more time because I do think we had a couple people hop on a little bit later. Um, if you do wish to ask a question, um, please go to your Q&A button depending on how your computer is set up um, with the WebEx, it may be a button with three dots on it. So um, here's the slide. If there are any questions, I'm also gonna put in the chat my email address and Pam's email address. Um, I know that there might be some people who don't watch this live, but watch it later. So if you do have any questions after the meeting ends, uh, feel free to email Pam or myself and we will get you an answer. Um, and I will be emailing out this video to everybody who registered for the meeting. And certainly um, the principals of the uh, two affected schools can share it out also. So, um, and Pam, did you wanna make any closing remarks? 
Um, for those who have tuned in, please be sure to share this with your neighbors and let them know they can find it on, on my site um, at OCPS.net if you go to school board as well as facilities. And I know Kim is on and we'll make sure there's a link on my Facebook page uh, for that as well. Uh, but um, we want to make sure everybody's informed and it's been a little harder to get information disseminated, even though we're using the same tools. I think the times have just got people a little bit distracted, but there is a point where we all will be going back face to face and we want to make sure if there's any uh, thoughts or things that we need to be aware of that they get into the design and the comment phase now so that we can take them into consideration. Uh, but thank you for coming tonight. And as always, um, we're here to, to answer any questions. As uh, Lauren said, feel free to email me and her. Um, sometimes she can be faster, it just depends on the question. And uh, thank you again for showing up. Thank you. And Pam, one question uh, did come just, just a moment ago asking about the zoning. So that that process in in the spring of 2021, there will be a public meeting. Um, the student enrollment department will reach out to all the families in the affected schools so that you'll be able to give input and participate in that process. The design of the school begins quite a bit earlier um, than the zoning process does. And the reason for that is so that most of the houses that will be in the area when the school opens will have been built. So we like to give people a little more time to move into Horizon West before we zone it because we all know how much um, how much growth and change there is going on in Horizon West right now. So yeah, stay tuned for zoning um, and we will come back again in the spring to show the finalized design plans and uh, we should at least have a, a date or a month for the zoning process at that point. Correct. Right. Okay, well, thank you to everybody for coming. Oh. Somebody, uh, one more question. Uh, can you confirm if the school's supposed to open in 2022 or 2023? 2022 is the answer. School is uh, expected to open in August of 2022. Oh, thank you, Francisco. There's the timeline. Um, if you could just pop that up again. So um, we're in design right now and we'll go into construction um, when school lets out in the spring, roughly. And then it takes about a year to build the school. And then the school will open in 2022. So I think that covers it, but certainly uh, if you're watching this later or think of something after the meeting ends, feel, feel free to reach out to, to Pam or myself. So thank you and, and have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.